This is lecture 6-6, six, six, which is about Beer's Law, also known as Beer-Lambert Law, and spectrophotometry, or using um, light and the how much light is absorbed by colored solutions to figure out their concentration. So we're going to, um, I'm going to ask you to do, as usual, your learning targets. These are really short because it's not covered in your book, and um, you can see from the College Board link curriculum that... Um, there's not a lot of information that you need to know, so I'm going to give you a little bit more background, but you do want your target set up before you watch, so please make sure that you complete your portion and pause the video and then restart it when you're ready. Okay, now that you're ready, here goes. So, um, Beer's Law, also known as the Beer-Lambert Law, is a way of describing the amount of light absorbed by a colored solution. And it has to be colored because we're gonna use different wavelengths of light, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So you'll see on this chalkboard here in this image, um, one representation of the mathematical calculation for Beer's Law. You also will see here um, the way that College Board writes it, which is A equals ABC. This is a formula that is on your formula sheet, so if you forget it as you're going through the um, rest of the semester, then you can always look it up on the formula sheet if you need to, but of course you don't have the formula sheet in the multiple choice, so you want to make sure that you're aware of what's happening. Um, let's talk about what all these things are here. Absorbance um, is basically the amount of light. It's a percentage of light that does not go through the solution, so it's the amount of light absorbed um, by the colored solution as light tries to pass through it. The molar absorptivity constant, uh, we call it A. This is written here. Um, and so this is identified or is an amount that's specific to a solution by identity, depending on who the solute is. The path length is the length of distance that light has to go through the solution. And then C is the solution concentration. In whatever unit you've chosen, we usually use molarity. Um, so let's kind of look and see what how this works. So um, as a definition, absorbance is the amount of light that does not pass through the solution or the amount of light absorbed by the colored particles in the solution. And so you want to kind of think carefully that um, as long as how far the light has to travel and the solute remains the same, then as the concentration increases, the absorbance will also increase. And this would be because as you have more colored particles in solution, then the amount of light absorbed by those colored particles increases directly. Um, there's also something called transmittance, and absorbance is inversely related to transmittance, but it's a logarithmic relationship. And so I just wanted to catch your attention to um, make sure that you were aware of that, that it's not just the inverse of it, but that it is a logarithmic inverse of it. So um, an absorbance of zero basically means that no light is absorbed, which would be 100% of light is transmitted. But because this is logarithmic, an absorbance of one means 10% of light is transmitted, and an absorbance of two means 1% of light is transmitted. And so you can see this is the scale that you would see on a spectrophotometer, where you can see that as the absorbance is listed, it only goes from zero to two here. And um, transmittance then is from zero to 100% or 100% transmitted through, transmit through or 0% transmit through. And so notice that this is actually something where by the time we get to about this block here, this is about where we're effective, where 100% of the light transmits, there would be no solute in solution, and where 10% um, of the light transmits, then obviously once we get past that, this is getting pretty concentrated. So. Um, the solution would be more concentrated where less light transmits. Um, and so we want to be watching for minimal error for the absorbance to be from zero to one, which is this range that I blocked out here. So um, we'll actually do some calculations with this later and you'll kind of see how that works, but I just wanted to kind of um, bring that up for you. All right, a little bit more information about each of these things in the relationship of Beer's Law. A, or the molar absorptivity constant, depends on who you're talking about. 
um, won't change during an experiment that you're doing because when we do experiments, we use the same solute for the whole experiment. We just change the concentrations. So it won't change. It's something that is constant in what you're doing, which means that really, honestly, we almost never need it because we're always looking at proportionalities here. And then um, it is directly related to the absorbance. So a high, higher molar absorptivity means that more light would be absorbed by whatever you're talking about. It also is specific to wavelength. So these would be the wavelengths in nanometers that are the reference points for these molar absorptivities. So notice that cobalt 2 plus um, has a greater molar absorptivity here at 462 or 463 nanometers. Um, remember that this is the purple violet end, the blue end of the spectrum. And cobalt 2 plus the ion looks blue to the eye. So that's something I want you to think about. Um, notice that the copper 2 plus ion actually has a highest molar absorptivity constant at 732, which is um, beyond red, really. And then nickel 2 plus has the highest one at 378, which is shorter than um, violet. So it doesn't always make sense. Um, but I do want you to kind of um, just kind of keep in mind that this does change depending on wavelengths of light. So you want to make sure that you're using a correct wavelength of light. The path length is the distance the light has to travel through the solution. This is the B in ABC. And it's basically talking about um, how thick is um, the path or how far will it have to go through that solution. So it's basically equal to the diameter of whatever's holding your solution. Your test tube, or we call them cuvettes, which are really just fancy test tubes that are um, really high quality. So there's very little variation in the glass. Um, and so there's no warping of the light path or bending of the light path from the cuvette itself. So the diameter of that is basically your path length. Again, this won't change during the experiment because to um, lessen error, we always use the same cuvette for all of our samples so that if there is variation in the glass, it's the same for every single one of them, right? So think scientific method, we want to get rid of the variables and um, we don't want the glass to be one of the variables here that changes how much light is absorbed or transmitted. So again, path length is something that we don't really even usually have to calculate with, right? So that's something that you want to be thinking about. And again, if everything else is constant, a longer path means that the light has to go through more solute. So um, picture that if my test tube stopped here, that the light would only have to go through here and less of it would be absorbed than if it has to come all the way through all of that. So if we did happen to change containers, the longer the path length, then the more the absorbance. So this is why we don't change path length in the middle of an experiment. Okay, um, C is solution concentration. We usually work this in molarity and um, you have to know that spectrophotometry and absorbance can only really be measured for colored solutions because we're going to pick wavelength of light that's absorbed by those colors. We're going to refract white light and get the color that we need that would be absorbed by the colored solution. So it has to be colored solutions. And you can see that this would be um, more concentrated over here and that this on the right would be less concentrated. And you can tell that just from the color, but you can't quantify it. We can quantify it using a spectrophotometer, so it gives us numerical values for those um, concentrations at that point. This is directly related to absorbance. The more concentrated means more light is absorbed, as long as you've chosen the correct wavelength. And it's often what we change in the experiment, because what we'll do is we'll create a graph, and I'll show you one in a minute, that um, relates known concentrations to known absorbances, and then we graph it, and we can figure out from absorbances what the concentration might be of a solution that we don't know the concentration of. So, um, so let's say we graphed these three and found a graph that looks like this, right, with those three, then this one right here, I could graph and I would expect that it would fall, actually I just did my graph wrong, hang on. Um, those three would be something like this if I were graphing um, concentration 
versus absorbance, right? And then I would expect that this one here would fall somewhere in here, and I could read the absorbance and read the molarity, okay? So this is how we use it. All right, Beer-Lambert Law, this is a great infographic. This is from the um, same bumbling biochemist page that I really liked before. But I do want you to see that this shows you in picture form how each of those makes a difference, right? So how each one of them relates to absorbance. So absorbance is a readout of how much wavelength gets stolen on its path through the cuvette or gets absorbed. So I really love that they're looking at this like a catcher's mitt and as the light comes through, that catcher mitt is gonna hang on to it and prevent it from going on. So the things that make it more likely to catch more would be a higher molar absorptivity constant. So if there was only one hand here, it would catch less, and that would be for a different substance, okay? Um, with a higher concentration, now you have more molecules in there, so each of those molecules acts like a new catcher's mitt, and um, if you're picturing the light trying to get through, it has less of a chance if there are two hands than if there are um, four hands or six hands or eight hands, right? And then the path length also, if we have the same concentration, means that now it has to get through two catcher's mitts. So I really like this image because it's really helpful to picture what's happening and what that relationship is. All right, so before we um, go any further, I just need to make sure that you understand how a spectrophotometer really works because all of this is the theory of what we're measuring, but you kind of want an idea of how it actually functions so that it makes a little bit more sense for you. So what happens is we have our light source, um, which is gonna give off light that is white light, which has all of the wavelengths of the spectrum, right? So we have our light source, which gives off every wavelength in the visible spectrum, and then some. And some spectrophotometers actually could do ultraviolet or infrared um, with non-colored solutions, solutions that we can't see the color of because they're not in the visible spectrum. But the spectrophotometers we use measure um, visible light wavelengths, okay? So then what happens is we put it through a prism and we can choose which color of light we want to come on through. So in this image, it was the person using it has chosen that it wants the yellow wavelengths of light to go through, but you can see that this has this little slit in it here, and if I slid this down, then the slit would be like in the orange section, or if I slid it down even farther, it would be in the red section, or if I slid it, uh, sorry, if I slid it down, I went backwards, if I slide this down, it's gonna be, the slit will be in the green section or the blue or the violet section. And if I slide it up, then the slit will be in the orange or red. So we choose which color of light we want to come through. And you pick your wavelength. We do this numerically, not really by saying I want blue, but by saying I want something that's about 620 nanometers, etc. okay? And then we shine that specific solution or that specific light through our sample of solution and remember that in this solution, there are all these solute particles, and some of them, whatever ones they hit of the right color, will um, then absorb light. So what we're seeing here is the absorbance that point 0.2, um, an absorbance of point 0.2 can come back and tell us, we can look at this, an absorbance of point 0.2 tells us that... Um, we're about here, approximately, I don't know, 63% of the light is transmitted. So you can kind of see how this works, that that meter then measures how much light comes um, through, but transfers it to absorbance, all right? Notice that if this is more concentrated, then less light goes through and the absorbance goes up if this is absorbance, okay? Um, you can set the machine to transmittance as well, but it's kind of confusing if you do that, because, and then you have to calculate the negative log of that to figure out what the absorbance is to put it into Beer's Law. So often we just read the absorbance directly off the spectrophotometer. Notice that the way that transmittance is determined is the amount of light that comes through, the intensity of the light that comes through versus the intensity of the light that we started with before it enters the solution sample. So, um, so transmittance is a measure of 
how much came through compared to how much whole part over whole, right? Um, if we're looking at um, absorbance, then this would be the reverse of that and the logarithmic function, okay? So um, finally then, what we're looking at here is that you have to choose your correct color of wavelength. Um, this would be really important because you want to make sure you're absorbing the light that you should be absorbing with your colored solution. So if you have blue dye, then we're going to use the um, complementary color to blue. This means that blue is reflected or not absorbed. And you'll see how this works, that we choose the wavelength where the most is absorbed. And we can do this on our own, but when we do that, that would be the orange color. So it's the complementary color is what is absorbed from what your eyes are seeing. So if we're seeing red light, then we're going to be seeing, we're going to use green wavelengths because the green would be absorbed. Okay, so the, this is reflected, the red is reflected. So we have to choose the opposite color, but you can do this by changing the wavelength and figuring out where it gives you the greatest amount of absorption, okay? And then finally, we make our calibration curve, your graph of absorbance versus concentration, and you can see that as you do this, you have um, points that you would create, and then you can come in and say, well, if I don't know the concentration, but I know the absorbance, let's say maybe I know the absorbance is 0.7, I can come over here and drop it down and say, oh, that means the concentration is about, mm, I don't know, 75% of um, what we're looking at if our concentration's in percent. Or if it's in molarity, then these would be molarities down here. Okay, so this is how we use it. Um, we will do a lot with this with a virtual lab that you're going to do in class, and so that hopefully gives you a good foundation.